So I shot a video yesterday on bringing a Optima battery back from the dead. Happened to be on my 99 Suburban and the difference between a smart battery charger and a conventional battery charger that doesn't know when to turn itself off. The next morning, the wife calls, says the car is dying and chugging and couldn't get it back. So, I'm suspecting it's my Optima battery. Let's find out. Look out! Seems to be doing okay, but we do have a check engine light. Let's see what we got going on under the hood. We'll check battery voltage first. And then we'll get out the scan tool. Here's your crown. It says right there, GND. You don't want to put it on the paint on the metal somewhere. Hopefully we'll get it to stay. And we have good charging. So the alternator's doing its job. Looks like we've got some other issue. Don't forget to turn off your meter. Okay, I've got my handy dandy blue driver scan tool. Let's see what we got. Okay, she's plugged in. Let's start the app. Car's been running now for uh, almost 10 minutes, if not longer. Seems to be running fine. Okay, it's connecting. You'll get a uh, blue flashing light when it's connected. And we're going to read codes, check engine. Can shaft position actuator, control circuit bank one. Alrighty, that makes sense. The code is P0010. See that guy? So that makes sense. Seems to be running okay, but uh, it's got a camshaft position sensor that is not happy. Bank one. That's the intake, because it's a four cylinder. Replace intake camshaft position sensor actuator solenoid. Right, so I'm going to look up which one is bank one for this guy, and then uh, probably just take the camshaft position sensor out and clean it. Uh, it's got a very fine screen on it, so if you uh, get some debris on it or something, it won't be happy. So sometimes just cleaning that off takes care of it. So in order to get to this guy, I gotta take off the air cleaner here and then the engine cover. There's a band clamp here, a band clamp down here on the throttle body, and then there's a PCV hose that goes right into the side. She's off. And the fancy engine cover, which I've never had off before. Okay, you've got to take the oil cap off to get that cover off. 
Imagine that. Okay, here's your two uh, sensors. Bank one, bank two. I'm assuming. Check me on that. Okay, with the engine cover off, we can get to these here. Need a little screwdriver. We're going to start with this guy. This is the intake side. Okay, that took a little bit. Put that somewhere you're not going to lose it or forget it. That cable comes off. If you've got a bunch of debris down in here, you want to make sure you vacuum that out first before you do this. 10 millimeter socket. I'm going to get a rag because this is going to be pretty hot when I pull it out. Okay, you'll notice the connector on here is gray. That's the intake side. The uh, exhaust side, the connector is black. Sometimes these need a little bit of persuasion to get out. Okay, just a little bit of persuasion with the screwdriver. And she is out. Okay, this is what we got. I can see just a little bit. Don't want to lose that. See just a little bit of dirt in here, actually. Shouldn't be anything like that. Actually looks like RTV or something. Um, something's going on in here. I'm going to clean this off real good. Put it back in. I'm using uh, throttle body and intake cleaner. Okay, this one is ready to go back in. And I'll go ahead and take the exhaust side out as well. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the exhaust side now. See what that one looks like. This is a good opportunity to um, really see what's going on. Put your clips back in, your locking clips. Get any junk away from the bolt, from the hole. Rat turds like to collect in here. So it's loose. It's got a little o-ring in here you have to overcome. This one looks okay, but look at all this gr gunk here. 
If there's ever a reason to change your oil sooner rather than later, this is it. Can you see that right there? Get rid of it. May very well be all this needs is a good cleaning. I'm very surprised. There shouldn't be any dirt in this whatsoever. None. Want to make sure your o-ring is clean, the surface down there is clean. And back in she goes. Tighten the bolts to the required torque spec. Click. just fall where they're supposed to go. Okay, so that's done. I gotta get the bolt back in this guy. And then the connection. There we go. Okay, I have the final bolt with the grommet. Going in. Click. Okay, now let's put her back together, see what she does. I don't know about this engine cover. This is nothing but a big HHR, and my HHR does not have this. You want to make sure this is cleaned out periodically just because this pipe goes up at an incline and then drains down so this tends to freeze up in uh, the winter in winter environments and then uh, if this gets plugged up you've, you're going to lose your rear main seal front main seal it's going to be ugly so you always want to make sure this guy is clear and it's just a matter of taking it off, taking it off with the valve cover, uh, spraying some cleaner through it, and then sticking it back on. Now I'm going to tighten up this band clamp and the band clamp down there on the throttle body, and then we'll start it up. Okay, let's crank her up, see what she does. Seems to be running fine, nice and smooth. Now let's check our scan tool. Come on. OK, 
Okay, we're connected. Still got the uh, clear pending and confirmed codes. Not allow. It always gives that message. But the engine light went off, so it's clear. All right, let's uh, turn on some AC because it's hot as balls in here. Then we'll go for a ride, see what she does. 57,000 miles and already having this issue. That would be another trip to the dealer if uh, I didn't have a scan tool and know what I was doing. So let's see how she does. So far so good. No check engine light. I've driven a little bit. I'm gonna drop the car off to wifey and get my Suburban back. Thanks for watching. This might have just been stuck. Don't do that.